Hello, good morning. Welcome to AP eLearning. And today's session is going to be on managing in information in the WHOIS database. Uh, before I start, I would like to know whether you can hear me properly and whether you can see me properly. If you can, could you please type onto the chat window so that I'm aware that you can hear and you can see me. Yeah, thank you. And you can hear, I believe. OK, uh, let's get started. Um, now, in this session, we are hoping to discuss about the APNIC Who is database and also how you can manage the information in the database. So to introduce myself, my name is Champika, and I currently work as the training manager at APNIC. Now, we also do offer similar e-learning courses regularly every Wednesday. So if you would like to participate or attend any other training courses, e-learning courses, please do register from our website. And you can also see the full schedule available from there. End of the training course, we also have uh, a, a short survey about this training session. Uh, uh, we would also appreciate if you can fill that survey for us. Thank you. Now, discussing about who is database, uh, first of all, we need to update that uh, uh, this who is database is mainly used for registering internet resources. When we say internet resources, there are quite a lot of resources available, for example, like IP addresses, autonomous system numbers, um, even you know when we talk about IP addresses, IPv4, IPv6, and so on, and then reverse delegations, there are quite a lot of information about routing, uh, then information related to uh, data protection, and so on. So all these things are available in the WHOIS database. Now, APNIC, as you know, APNIC is the regional internet. The internet resources to the Asia Pacific region. Industry like APNIC, when uh, we distribute internet resources to uh, various organization, organizations like APNIC members, for example, uh, we do register these resources, IP addresses, AS numbers, and so on in the WHOIS database. So WHOIS database, you can call it as a central or kind of, you know, it's a repository where we register all this information, right? Now, generally, all the regional internet registries, they do maintain these WHOIS databases and, uh, uh, and, and also, you know, all these RIR WHOIS databases are uh, uh, mirrored so uh, so that's the uh, you know that's the kind of you know concept in terms of the uh, implementation now usually you know as part of our membership agreement with our members uh, you know we do highlight the fact that uh, the registration of internet resources are necessary uh, and also you know we do recommend them to uh, make sure that the information in the WHOIS database is kept uh, uh, accurate, uh, kept up to date, uh, as well as in especially the things like contact details and so on, are uh, all uh, updated properly. So that's uh, that's the main uh, purpose here, basically to register the information or uh, information related to IP addresses and, and, and so on, like internet resources. So it is actually a public network management database. Um, as I mentioned, it is operated by the regional internet registries. Now, this data, the internet resources related data, gen, you know, they, uh, when, when this data is, um, for example, registered by the internet registry, we make it public. 
because you know even when you think about IP addresses or even AS numbers and so on they are public resources so that is why we register those in a public database like who is database right but there are also some information um, you may think it, it uh, you may you may think it, it is uh, somewhat private for example uh, the assignments or sub allocations that you make to your customers you may not want to sometimes you know uh, show that in a public uh, database so for example you know for various reasons maybe for privacy related reasons or even for uh, competition related reasons or whatever reason you know if you do not want to uh, publicly uh, uh, you know show those uh, data information in in a public database you can still tag those information as private so that's the important thing uh, but you still have to register the information in the database right so you still have to register but then if any information need to be tagged as private you can still do that in the whois database so what kind of mm, data that we can uh, include we can we can register in the whois database things like ip addresses things like autonomous system numbers uh, as I said, reverse DNS delegations, uh, routing policies, uh, route objects, and so on. Right? Now, this uh, sort of you know there are various other e-learning training e-learning courses that we uh, that we have focusing on various other types of resources that we have listed here. Things like AS numbers, or even if you want to know about reverse DNS delegations, or even routing related. Uh, um, discussions and so on these are all available through various other e-learning courses so in case if you are new to these things uh, i would recommend you to attend uh, any of our uh, other e-learning courses in in similar topics but in in this topic our focus is mostly on the registration aspects and the who is database we are not going into details about discussing about as numbers or reverse domains and, and so on right uh, but uh, as i told you the important thing here is to track these resources because the registrations are available uh, here through the whois database so you can also track these resources um, we also have contact information uh, of our members uh, members in a sense like the contact parties for these particular resources they are also available available from the whois database so uh, if i take um, uh, for instance let's say if the internet registry allocates or distributes some certain ip address block to uh, another party to a member or to another network uh, it is um, members responsibility that they nominate some contact personnel for uh, who are responsible for that particular network uh, uh, or, or, or that uh, organization now these contacts could be in the uh, form of administrative contacts or technical contacts so depending on those roles they can register this information in the whois database so contact information is also something very important considering the uh, whois uh, information and then the authorization if you do not provide some authorization for those contact uh, contact uh, details you know the things uh, anyone can change their contact details contact information and so on so that is why it is important to protect those information using another type of authorization mechanism we will discuss those things later in the slides so moving on to the uh, next slides so these are the various type of objects which are available in the whois database this is not a list of uh, everything right there are more objects but these are some of the important objects if you want to know more about um, the other objects as well as you know get a good comprehensive understanding about the whois database then i would uh, probably recommend you to visit our APNIC website and we have a who is guide in the APNIC website so you can refer to that now the important objects are listed here if you see the left hand column you see person role inet num and so on there's a list here now these are all different types of objects 
And also you can see the purpose of these objects listed in the right side, the purpose. So for example, we have a person object, an object called person, to register the contact details of those persons who are responsible for that network. Maybe the network uh, administrators or you know whoever the uh, contact personnel who are involved in maintaining that network. These contacts could be technical contacts or administrative contacts. Usually the administrative contact involves in administrative details like you know um, billing or administrative uh, related uh, managing the administrative information whereas the technical person could be involved in uh, managing the uh, technicalities uh, uh, in the network right and then also we have object called role object and now this is to define uh, a contact as a role because sometimes some organizations some networks could be quite large and they, there may be number of number of contact people who are involved in, in maintaining, managing that network. In such situation, rather than having or listing contact people, personnel, it is easy or, or more effective to define a role uh, in that way. Um, it's quite easy to manage this object, right? So I will, uh, oh, it is easy to manage the, uh, the, uh, the objects that you create. But I will come back to this later and again I'll show you how these role objects are created and the purpose of that. Then we have PyNetNum objects. Now these are to register the IPv4 addresses and then IPv6 uh, addresses can be registered through PyNet6Num objects. Then we have autonom objects. Now these are to register autonomous system numbers, uh, domain objects to register reverse domains or reverse delegations, route objects to uh, register the prefixes or route, uh, you know, uh, the prefixes that you announce from your network, and then uh, maintain object to protect these uh, these other objects that we discussed. Uh, and then main IRT is the incident response team in case if there is an incident that need to be reported uh, the people can co communicate through that uh, contact details there you provide there in the main IRT so these are you know some of those objects and the purposes as I mentioned um, now again uh, in this in this course in this session our plan is not to go into details about all those different uh, aspects things like you know IPv6 or autonomous systems or reverse domains even though it's listed that's not our objective in this training course our objective is to relate those to the who is database as I mentioned if you want to know more about those other uh, areas you can follow our e-learning courses related to those topics so when uh, APNIC uh, distribute these IP addresses or AS numbers and so on to our members, our um, uh, or, you know various those organizations. We do it. Uh, we we use some certain terminologies. One is what you need to know. Uh, that's what we call allocation, and the other thing is called assignment. Now, allocation is you know, to define allocation. Allocation means a block of IP addresses that you or that the registry distributes to uh, a member or to an organization for further distribution. Whereas assignment means, assignment means a block of IP addresses that are being uh, given to an operational network. So that's the difference between allocation and assignments. So allocations are the blocks that possibly if you're an APNIC member, you get from APNIC and then uh, you can then further distribute to your customers and so on. Well, that's allocation. Whereas assignment means if you're an APNIC member, you get a block from APNIC and then you give a certain uh, smaller block out of that to your uh, infrastructure possibly or to a customer side uh, and that's or in, to an end site in other words. So this is what we call an assignment, right? Now when you do these activities, you need to register various type of objects for different purposes. First of all, you need to have a person or role object so that 
we know there is a contact person, contact party who is responsible for that IP block, right? And then you also have inetnum or inet6num object. Uh, the purpose of this is, as I mentioned to you, now that's, that defines the IP address range. If it is IPv4, inetnum object defines that. And if it is inet 6 now, I mean, if it is IPv6 address range, the INET 6 num object defines that. Now, you need to protect these objects as well. So we have this object called maintain object where you can protect those information in the who is database. Autonomous object, that is if you receive an autonomous system, right? So these are the most common objects that you would be dealing with uh, when you request for the resources from APNIC or when you become a new member of APNIC. Right. So the APNIC um, staff, the host masters, the help desk staff, they will uh, require these details from you so that they can create, they can help you to create these objects in the WHOIS database. Now let's have a look how these objects are interrelated. Now we discussed few objects here. First of all, INET now object, that's your IP address block that you receive. Now IP address block, that's, um, now this is the IP address block, the inetnum object, so that's the IP address range, if it's an IPv4 address range, for example. Now in this object, there are various attributes. Now attributes are the ones which I showed you earlier, like the appearing in the left side column, whereas values of those are appearing in the right side. So every object has got these attributes and values. Attributes comes in the left column, whereas values comes in the right column. So you have in this example, in inetnum object, that's the IP address range. These are the contact persons who are responsible for this range, this block. There is an administrative contact, and then there is a technical contact. Now these, um, this uh, definition here, this is what we call a NIC handle. It's kind of a sequen sequen uh, sequential number uh, generated through uh, certain with certain parameters. Now, in this case, it is EC196AP. So that's a unique identifier, right? So EC comes from the person's name. Right, first letter of first name and first letter of last name and then 196 is a sequential number and AP suffix is to define it is Asia Pacific. So it's a kind of unique identifier. This is what we call a NIC handle. So there is a NIC handle for the administrative contact and then, then there is a NIC handle for the technical contact. Right. Then also we have, you can see that these refers to the person objects or the role objects. So this administrative contact or the technical contact will need to create what we call a person object or a role object, if it's a role, so that they can refer those NIC handles into this inetnum object, right? In other words, when we see this inetnum objects, we know that these are the people who are responsible for this IP address range, okay? Then we have this main by attribute. Now this is to define the maintain object. So the maintain object here in this example is main uh, main wf ex. Usually again there is a convention here. Main is to stand the maintainer. Now this is the country code in this case wf, and then ex. Uh, this could be any name given by the uh, member or the organization, right? So that's how we define the maintain ID. And then you have this maintain object which refers to that ID. So you can see that there is some interrelation. Always inetnum object uh, re refers to these NIC handles, which are person objects or role objects, and then the maintain object, which is being protected by this maintain ID, right? So those are the interrelations between those objects. So I discussed about person object to you earlier. Um, so you can see that uh, the NIC handle, 
right? So it's a kind of unique identifier to identify uh, a person in the Whois database. So what is any kernel? Um, also, I, I explained to you earlier. So in this example, so there is this example object person. Uh, the, his name is uh, Eric Chu in this case uh, from example net service provider. So you can see that Eric Chu, uh, the E is the first letter of first name, C is the first letter of la uh, last name, so EC, that's why you have EC here, and then 196 is a sequential number, and then AP is because it's AP NIC region, the Asia Pacific, that's, that's uh, why you have AP there, right? So you will see this kind of person objects, you know, so many of these type of person objects in the Whois database. Uh, so even when you create a person object, you will uh, you will have a NIC handle like that, uh, quite similar to uh, the sequence that what we went through, right? Then also we have the role object. The difference between the person object and the role object is to uh, differentiate between a person and a role. That's it, simple, right? Person means a certain name. In the previous example, we had Eric Chu, so that's a person, all right? Whereas in, in, in a role, this could be something like maybe uh, network administrators, okay? Or um, hostmaster, for example. Now, these kind of uh, definitions are roles, and you can create role objects out of those. But still, even a role object will have its own NIC handle, okay? Now, why, what is the use of role object? The reason is, now let's say if this organization is a quite large organization, right? If the organization is quite a large organization, then you may have number of people maintaining various networks. So, for example, you know, you might have a lot of customers, you might have a lot of uh, network administrators and so on. Now, if you have, let's say, quite a lot of network administrators who are involved in managing, let's say, different regions of your network, different parts of different segments of your network, right? In this case, if there are lots of inetnum objects created by this person, all those inetnum objects are referred with the NIC handle of that person, right? So if you have, let's say, hundreds of inetnum objects, you will see that person's NIC handle is appearing in those hundreds of INNM objects. But if this person, let's say, decide to leave the organization, right, move from this organization, then it is a little bit of trouble to replace whoever the new party in all those hundreds of objects because, you know, you have quite a lot of updates to be done. Right. So this is why, rather than re referring the person, person's NIC handle in that, in all those you know hundreds of inetnum objects, what we can do is to create what we call a role object. So in this scenario, this slides talks about let's say there was this person called uh, Eric Chu. We had uh, EC one nine six AP earlier. His Nick handle was appearing in all these objects, but then a new person called AN3AP, right? AN3AP replaced this person, the old, the previous person. So when the new person replaced the previous person, the new person's Nick handle need to be appearing now in all these objects. Now in this example, we only show three objects, three unetnum objects, but in the real life, you might be having hundreds or few hundreds objects, right? If, if especially if you're a large organization, if you're a, a big uh, operator, for example, right? So in, in this kind of scenario, what you can do is, instead of referring the person's NIC handle in all these inetnum objects, you can refer a role, because role doesn't change. It's the person who change. So this is the uh, this is the um, objective that we are trying to achieve here, right? So replacing contacts in the database using a role object. So what we are trying to do, we are creating a role object, and then we are including all these 
various people who are responsible to ma you know to manage in, in managing that network inside this role object so you can see even that a in three the person the new person then need to be updated inside the role object rather than updating uh, the inet num objects because in the inet num objects what you see is the nick handle of role so this is the nick handle of role right this is the nick handle of role e i p a 91 a p that's the nick handle of role so that's the nick handle that we provide in every object it's not the person's nick handle in the previous case we gave a and 3 ap we had to remove ec196 and we had to replace a and 3 ap over there right with that but now we don't need to because the nick handle of inetnum object is appearing in all these objects but we only need to replace this in one place which is the role object this is the only place that role object you know that person's nick handle a and 3 ap is appearing so that is why uh, this is much easier in terms of maintaining your objects right especially you know those person objects so it's good to kind of always especially if you're a large organization good to have these person objects uh, sorry the role objects instead of the person objects right okay now we get to this inet num and inet 6 num earlier i mentioned you that inet num is to register the ipv4 blocks whereas inet 6 num is to register the ipv6 blocks now also so once we register this information you can query the who is database to find this information right now where there are various types of who is clients available usually you know in, in unix and so on you you have a uh, who is client as well and then um you know you also have we also have this uh, web client so which is kind of much easier if you want to use so if you visit the apnic website we have this who is client web client and you can go there and it would look something like this so if you see uh, here there are these search uh, field where you can search any um, any sort of uh, information that you're looking for it could be a person's name person's email id for example or even a nick handle now these kind of things can be searched right uh, or even ip address block or even as number and so on right now also if you want to further dig into the or further uh, narrow down your searches or even further you know uh, perform various other functions out of all those um, uh, queries that you're doing you can have these various flags to do that so there are various flags like you know in this case uh, minus l is to uh, find first level less specific matches or minus capital l to find all the less specific matches or in for example capital minus m is to find or m flag is to find all the more specifics things like you know as you know the ip addresses are organized in a tree hierarchy when you when you think about ip address space we can always organize that uh, to be in a tree hierarchy for example like uh, on the top of the tree you have the less specific matches whereas when you go bottom of the tree you will have more specific matches right so you are getting more and more narrow down when you go further down the tree so if you want to actually you now let's say um, you get an ip you are an apnic member you get an ip address blocked from apnic right and then you further distribute to your downstream isp and then the downstream isp further distributes to their own customers or the end site so if you want to go more and more narrow down dig into more specific networks what's that end site you know this sort of uh, queries you can always use these flags to do that if you do some less specific matches that means you're looking for parent type of blocks like apnic or even uh, above that IANA type of blocks right whereas if you go further down you can find your downstream ISPs or even your customer networks uh, more specific matches if it is 
already kind of registered as public objects. If it's not public, then you will not see that um, uh, because you can only see the publicly tagged ones, right? But all the blocks which are being distributed by APNIC, by the registry, is visible in the WHOIS database because uh, they are what we call portable blocks. So earlier I mentioned you about two terminologies, allocation and assignments. Also, there are two other terminologies we normally use in these objects, portable and non-portable. Portable means uh, those are the blocks uh, that are being delegated from the Internet Registry to you yourself, whereas non-portable blocks are the ones that, uh, that you delegate or distribute to your customers, downstreams and so on. Those are non-portable blocks. And the portable blocks uh, we need to uh, route uh, in the internet, so you need to announce those blocks to the routing table, right? So these are various flags. If you want to query the WHOIS database, you can actually you know, go into more details and you can query um, various types of IP blocks. Even if you want to find exact match, you, you know, there are flags for that. Uh, there are reverse domains. You can even do reverse uh, DNS uh, lookups in the WHOIS database. Uh, just to kind of very quickly uh, tell you, when AP NIC uh, de delegates these IP address blocks, uh, it is necessary, it is recommended that you create these reverse mappings. You know, in other words, you map your IP addresses back to names. Otherwise, you know, your customers, yourself might not be able to, you know, if you're using that IP address block, let's say to do certain uh, type of queries, maybe to visit certain uh, secured websites or even um, uh, send some secured email and this kind of things, you know, sometimes uh, you may not be able to do those unless you create these reverse DNS entries, reverse DNS delegations. Now, when you create these reverse DNS delegations, the, why it is important to register these in the WHOIS database because you, uh, in the object template, when you register this information, you are providing your name servers, uh, your name servers to APNIC because APNIC needs to know, the Internet Registry needs to know your name servers so that when uh, the DNS query gets resolved, uh, the APNIC name servers can always um, refer to your name servers, right? That's how the DNS query is resolved. Usually, uh, you know, uh, the queries would, uh, you know, the recursive name servers would look for root name servers and then, then the queries would be referred to internet, internet registry level name servers because internet registries, uh, they have, uh, they have, they maintain the, the, uh, the higher level of uh, IP blocks, for example, slash eight in IPv4, right? So these type of blocks are being uh, delegated by the internet registries. And then we have this top level domain called ARPA, which is called the reverse domain. And then underneath that, we have another um, subdomain called inadra. So in IPv4, we have a, we have a subdomain called uh, inadra.arpa, basically, you know, subdomain called inadra.arpa, and then the slash eights would come underneath that. So 203.inadra.arpa, something like that. So that zone, that reverse zone is maintained by AP NIC, right? I'm just trying to briefly explain about a uh, little, little bit of this reverse DNS so that you know what we are talking about here. So that's APNIC, which is your parent, because APNIC delegates the IP address block to you. So when the query resolves back, query comes from root to us, APNIC, and then APNIC will need to then refer to you because uh, we have delegated the IP block to you. So that means we need to refer to your name servers. So in other words, you will have to provide your name servers to APNIC. How you can provide the name servers to APNIC, that is, through these objects what you register in the WHOIS database called domain objects, right? So those domain objects are also registered in the WHOIS database. And you can even query for those using this minus D uh, flag, right? Also you can find, there are things called inverse queries. Inverse queries are queries where you can try to look for something with reference to another thing. If you want to find out, let's say, uh, there is a person and you want to find out, okay, what are the uh, objects maintained by this person? So you're looking for something with reference to another thing, right? So you can do inverse queries uh, um, in this sort of situation. You can also get all these 
object templates minus C. Uh, you can find various object templates if you want to. You now you can do all these things using even the web uh, interface that you have. So what is a maintainer? Earlier I briefly main mentioned this. Maintainer is a mechanism to protect your data in the Whois database, right? Your objects in the Whois database. There are multiple levels of this depending on the hierarchy. Uh, earlier I showed you there was an attribute called main by mnt hyphen by main by. Usually when internet registry like APNIC, when we delegate a block to you, uh, we have a main by field, main by attribute in that object, and we ref we put AP nick maintainer ID there. For example, you might see AP nick hyphen HM, right? AP nick, da AP -NIC dash HM. So that is AP nick uh, hostmasters maintainer. So in other words, only AP nick can change the contents of that object. So when we give you a portable block, portable allocation, or portable assignment. Right? So that block is protected by APNIC maintainer. But then let's say you got a certain range. In IPv4 you might have got a let's say I slash 22. Or in IPv6 you might have got a slash 32 in IPv6. Now if you want to further delegate part of that block to another party. Let's say you want to go slash 24 to one of your customers in IPv4. Or if you want to give a slash 48 in IPv6 to a, another customer of yours. In this sort of scenarios, you have to create another object, another INS num object or INS6 num object, and that object can be protected by your maintainer. You don't need to put APNIC maintainer there. You can put your maintainer because it is under the range that we have given given the block. Right. So this is why we have kind of hierarchical maintainers. Also, there is a maintainer where you can use to protect your um, route objects. Route objects are used to uh, define the prefixes that you announce. So even the route objects can be protected by uh, something called a main route, uh, main route attribute. Right? So there are various levels of maintain objects available uh, for you to use depending on the situation. Now this is an example of the maintainer object that we use for database protection, right? So you can see uh, maintainer, main AU, uh, which uh, APNIC training. So uh, I told you there is a convention. That's the main, main starts from main, and then you have the two letter country code, and then that's your organization or network name there, right? Uh, so these are the administrative persons, technical person, in this case the same person who is doing both. Uh, and then you can see also here this uh, object is protected by an authentication mechanism um, using uh, MD5 uh, key, right? And uh, you can see that, that's the uh, authentication mechanism. And uh, also in the source is, is APNIC. And here, um, that's the main by field is uh, the you know the maintainer object of uh, of this organization. Okay. So main by and main lower attributes. So main by attributes, as I mentioned you earlier, so this can be used to protect any object, and uh, so the changes to protected object must satisfy the authentication rules of the maintainer object. Things like you know cryptic password or um, or md5 key or and so on okay and maintain main lower this is to for you know when you further distribute your ip blocks to your downstream isps or customers and so on you can still use this main lower right so in the ap uh, delegated block object the bigger block the parent block we will have two attributes then. One is called main by attribute and the other one is called main low attribute. So out of those two attributes, main by will be APNIC attribute or APNIC maintainer, whereas main lower will be our members maintainer or your maintainer. Right? So that's how we maintain the hierarchy uh, between those two. So you can also see, you know, this hierarchy can go all the way down from APNIC to
to member and even when you do sub allocations and assignments and so on so this hierarchy can uh, traverse through okay so here you know again this is how you see that in the um, objects right you can also see main buy and main routes in this scenario actually uh, main buy and main routes are same so you will uh, see the same but in a typical situation you might see main buy is ap nick hm and then main global is is your maintainer and then also um, you might have a main route if you are announcing your prefix to the internet routing table so you might have a main routes uh, for a route objects uh, highlighting that prefix okay i think um, this is what we wanted to actually uh, discuss during this uh, e-learning session and uh, now if you have any questions i'm i'm happy to take some questions now uh, it is a very uh, simple and, and a very brief short presentation about who introducing who is database so just to summarize what we discussed uh, during this session we talked about why we need why there is this database called who is database who maintains it and what do we have inside that we have all these different object types uh, for different purposes uh, to register IP address blocks to register AS numbers to register contact uh, information and so on and then also we discussed uh, about you know how those objects and you know, some examples of those objects how the identity object looks like how the uh, person object look like and then also we discussed things like nick handle what do you mean by nick handle and then also we discuss about the uh, interrelation between these objects you know how the inetum object the person objects and the maintain objects you know they relate to each other then also we discuss about maintain objects uh, how they can be used the protection and all these attributes that are available also then i showed you about querying the who's database we have uh, the web client you know where which is available from apnic website that you can query and then various flags if you want to further query into more specifics or less specifics exact matches and so on you can query those using the who is client the who is queries and then also we discuss about uh, other objects types like domain objects uh, the reverse domains for reverse domains uh, how, how they look like and so on and then also you know some uh, examples of the maintainer objects and the hierarchy things like main by main lower and main routes and how they can be used as well so this is just a you know very basic summary of of uh, who is database and if you want to refer uh, more into who is database we can all you can always uh, visit our website and there is a who is database guide uh, you are welcome to actually use that and, and uh, learn more about who is database and how you can use that if you have any questions uh, you can also ask us these questions uh, we have a help desk <coughs> available so you can write to help desk um, the help desk this is about little information about some sh uh, short information about help desk so there is this help desk chat available you can uh, talk to any of our staff using help desk chat if you having difficulty trouble in registering objects or, or understanding various attributes uh, templates and so on feel free to talk to us and and we are quite happy to help you in this regard uh, our help desk is open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, Australian uh, Eastern Standard Time. Now, uh, so that's just a summary of uh, what we have discussed uh, today. If you have any questions, um, feel, you know, feel free to ask those questions now, and I'm quite happy to answer those questions now. Okay, um, it seems there are no questions. So I, um, uh, and I would actually uh, conclude the session here. And again, you know, uh, it would be great if you can uh, fill in our feedback form. We have a feedback form. Uh, if you can fill in this, uh, that would be also helpful. I will just type that. 
so that you can just uh, click this link Right, so you, if you click this link, I think uh, you'll get into the feedback form and then uh, feel free to fill that and slides are available uh, also after filling the survey. Okay. Other than that, if there are no questions and thank you very much for your participation today and if you have any um, interest in, in attending any of our upcoming e-learning sessions, today we have two more sessions coming up. One is at 12.30 and then uh, Brisbane time and the other one is at 2.30 Brisbane time. Both sessions will go for one hour uh, from 12.30 to 1.30 and 2.30 to 3.30 uh, Brisbane time. So um, also if you, as I mentioned to you earlier, if you are interested in attending any of our other e-learning courses, please feel free to um, visit our website. I will also type that and you can get more information from there, right? training.apnic.net. Okay then, thank you very much for your participation today and we look forward to seeing you in another e-learning session. Thank you.